My name is Lindsay and uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about jamming or practicing some bass grooves along with um, an iPhone basically, an iPad, or iPod, whatever you might have, um, and how you can use that to your benefit in terms of uh, you know different tempos and different accents on the beats and how just that it's a little maybe a little more fun to do that than playing with uh, a metronome. So I'm going to cover like a blues shuffle, maybe a slow blues, a, a rock beat, maybe a country thing, and uh, just kind of explain along the way how what you're supposed to be listening for as a bass player. Um, because a lot of times, I'd say most of the time, as a bass player, you don't have the luxury of having a drummer around to practice with 24 hours a day. And so this is probably the next best thing. All right, the first uh, groove we're gonna try out here is a, a basic rock groove. Um, eighth notes on the hi-hats, uh, bass drum on one and three, snare on two and four. And as a bass player, what you wanna listen for are the eighth notes on the hi-hats as a way to kind of keep the your bass line intact and on the money. Um, and also, once you get that down, then you can start adding a little bit of an accent when the snare hits. So I'm gonna... Get the app going here. We're at 120 beats per minute. So you can hear that's what the hi hats are doing. And just a little extra mustard on the when the snare hits. So if you're doing a chord progression. eighth notes accurate and basically playing at the same time as the hi-hat then you will establish a really solid groove with the drummer and especially putting that little bit of extra accent on the two and the four when the snare hits and you don't even necessarily have to do an entire chord progression you can just pick a root note and kind of just make sure you're fingers are playing those eighth notes at the same time as the drummer does. Alright, the next one we're going to take a look at is um, playing a shuffle. Um, so once again, as with the eighth notes, with the rock groove, as the bass player, you listen to what the drummer's doing on the hi-hats because he's uh, playing that shuffle rhythm. If you know about a shuffle rhythm, it's the triplet with the middle uh, eighth note not there. Um, but if you can hear what the hi-hats are doing, or the, the drummer's playing on the hi-hats, that's what I'm going to be playing on the bass, is kind of matching up with those. And it so happens with the, the way the groove goes is that the bass drum is in there too. So once again, you can put a little extra accent on when that snare is hitting. So let's give this a shot here. what the hi-hats are doing and I'm playing right along with those. And the bass drum is basically kind of keeping a four on the floor. Now you don't have to do this kind of Chicago bass line, you can just do root notes. The same kind of thing, really playing along with those hi hats. And the accents coming on that one, two, and three, and four. OK, 
Okay, the next groove uh, we'll take a look at here is one that's in 12-8. It's kind of a slower one. And this is a groove where, as the bass player, you don't necessarily have to be playing what the drummer is, what he's accenting on the hi-hats. This is more of a bass drum and snare um, thing that you want to focus on what the drummer is playing on those two, the bass drum and the snare. Um, so let me just hit this one at 60 beats a minute. So you can hear right there, I'm not playing that triplet figure on the hi-hat. I'm kind of following what the bass drum and the snare are doing. So just to provide the, the contrast so that you don't always have to be mimicking what the drummer's doing on the hi-hat. In this case, you're really listening to what he's doing on the bass drum and the snare and trying to lock in with that. And if you lock in with the bass drum and the snare on this one, then you get a really nice, solid groove. Okay, here's another one um, that, as the bass player, you're not going to be mimicking what basically what the drummer's doing with his hands. Once again, you're gonna be listening to what the bass drum's doing. This is a really active uh, drum beat. Um, a lot of people call it the train beat. Um, and basically what you're doing on bass is just playing like the root and the fifth and hitting when the bass drum hits and not doing what the snare is doing because if you did that, it would probably sound kind of crazy. So let me just hit this here. You can hear the bass drum boom, 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 boom. So there's a lot going on with that drum beat. So you know, as a bass player, you only have to keep going with the bass drum there. One of these kind of bass lines, the toughest part is keeping that rhythm going at this speed. And as you can see, you can kind of you know, do a couple of different things, but the drummer is kind of keeping it going with the snare, and all you have to worry about is just hitting those bass drum accents. Okay, we'll do a swing rhythm next, and uh, this is one where, as a bass player, you definitely want to be listening to what the drummer's doing on the ride. Um, you can get away with just playing quarter notes and the odd time kind of accenting what the drummer's doing with the triplet. Um, but a lot of it is just kind of like a four on the floor kind of groove that you can play. And like I said, kind of alternating in between keeping them at quarter notes or accenting them a bit with what the drummer's doing on the ride. And I'll explain this. So right there, I'm just playing quarter notes. And if you can hear that little bit of an accent that the drummer's doing in there with the snare, So if I add some accents in there, kind of catching that bit of that triplet. So to, uh, to wrap it up and to conclude, this has basically been a demonstration of how, um, you know, if you're playing bass and you want to practice some different grooves, um, you can get this, uh, it's called the Drum School app and it's on uh, 
like the iTunes or I guess the App Store. I don't think they have it for Android yet, but I know I do know that they have some other ones that are similar to it. And what you want to make sure you get is one that has adjustable tempos, um, so you can kind of find the right tempo that's good for you. And and it's good for a bass player too to look at what the drums are doing and kind of understand how drum music is written because if you can see how the hi-hats are written out as all eighth notes and what the bass drum is doing on certain beats that helps you as a bass player to know what you should be playing and not necessarily even in terms of note selection but in just in terms of the groove because if you can really understand what the drummer's doing as a bass player then you can really lock in and that's what the that's what it's all about is locking in with the drummer um, because you don't want to be doing your own thing and having the drummer be doing his own thing because then it just gets kind of kind of messy. So this is a great way, I think, to practice those grooves, keep your time uh, in check. Um, metronomes are good for that too, but it's a little dry um, as compared to having you know a full drum kit that you're able to uh, play along with, and especially with the you know you can adjust the tempo, and even with that drum school app you can isolate hi-hat or bass drum if that's something you really want to work on. So I hope this has been uh, helpful for you and um, yeah keep on playing and we'll see you next time.